In August 2023, Huawei took the smartphone industry by storm with its 7 nanometers Kirin 9000's chipset, powering the Mate 60 series. It was a groundbreaking moment as the Kirin 9000's, built by China's leading semiconductor foundry SNIC, marked Huawei's return to 5G flagship phones since the Mate 40 series in 2020. This milestone was significant, not just technologically, but politically, as it demonstrated Huawei's resilience against intense US sanctions. Let's take a step back to understand why this was such a monumental achievement. In 2019, the US government placed Huawei on the entity list, effectively cutting the company off from US suppliers. Then in 2020, a new export rule banned foundries using American technology from shipping advanced semiconductors to Huawei without a license. This double blow aimed to cripple Huawei's access to 5G technology, citing national security concerns. At the time, Huawei was one of the largest customers of TSMC, second only to Apple. The sanctions were so severe that many doubted Huawei could continue to compete in the global smartphone market. To adapt, Huawei shifted to using Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors modified to disable 5G connectivity. These chips powered models like the P50, Mate 50, and P60. But with the release of the Mate 60 series, Huawei showed that it could innovate under extreme pressure, introducing the Kirin 9000s and reclaiming its position in the 5G space. Fast forward to now, and Huawei has raised the bar again with the Mate 70 series. Some models in this lineup feature the Kirin 9100, a 6 nanometers application processor built by SMIC. While SMIC ranks as the world's third largest foundry, trailing behind TSMC and Samsung Foundry, its production methods are constrained by US sanctions. The company doesn't have access to extreme ultraviolet EV lithography machines, a key technology for manufacturing chips smaller than 6 nanometers. So how did SMIC manage to produce a 6 nanometers chip without UV? The answer lies in a technique called multiple exposure. Using older deep ultraviolet DUV lithography machines, SMIC employed this method to etch intricate and compact patterns onto silicon wafers. By carefully aligning and exposing each layer multiple times, SMIC succeeded at manufacturing the Kirin 9100. However, this workaround comes with trade-offs. The process reduces chip performance, lowers production yields, and increases costs. These limitations mean that Huawei has a limited supply of the Kirin 9100. As a result, the chip is expected to power only the premium variants of the Mate 70 series, such as the Mate 70 Pro, Mate 70 Pro Plus, and the ultra-luxurious Mate 70 RS Porsche design. Despite being a technological marvel, the Kirin 9100 faces tough competition. At 6 nanometers, it is less advanced than cutting-edge 3 nanometers chips like Apple's 18, Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite, and MediaTek's Dimensity 9400, challenging global landscape. As the Mate 70 series rolls out, it's clear that Huawei's story is far from over. The journey of overcoming sanctions and pushing technological boundaries is a testament to the company's ability to adapt and innovate. What lies ahead for Huawei and SNOIC remains uncertain, but one thing is for sure. They've proven they're not out of the game yet. Stay tuned as we bring you more updates on Huawei, SMIC, and the ever-evolving world of smartphone technology. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the latest tech developments.